Good morning and welcome to Dahlonega United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Robin Parr. I'm the Associate Minister at the church and we are so glad to have you and welcome you this morning from wherever you are. This is Transfiguration Sunday and today we're going to talk about what that means. We're going to talk about why Jesus was transfigured and we're also going to talk about what that means for us. What is the difference between transformation and transfiguration? But let's begin this morning in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this day, a day that you have made, and we are so glad. So come, Holy Spirit. Draw near, draw in. May we breathe you in and breathe the world out so that we too may begin this process, a process of transformation that leads to transfiguration. So come, Holy Spirit, we worship you, the triune God, this morning. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. our gospel reading comes from Mark's gospel, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. However, I would encourage you to read this story, the story of the transfiguration in all of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But this morning, this is Luke's account of the transfiguration. Here now again, Mark 9, 2 through 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Of the transfiguration reveals what we all already know that Jesus goes to the mountain and there he meets with Elijah and Moses and the point of it we know is to symbolize that Jesus is both the law and the prophets the fulfilling of the law and the prophets Moses represents the law and Elijah represents the prophets I love Mark's account, how he says that Jesus becomes whiter, whiter than, than even bleach, could bleach his clothes out. It was luminescent, glowing, I would say. I think about that, and I think in that moment, just like what we saw with Jesus' baptism, we actually see the presence of the triune God there. We hear the Father do we not say as he did at Jesus' baptism, this is my son. I am well pleased. I love him. And then he adds to it. 
listen to him. Those who translated Mark's gospel and put some punctuation in it, put an exclamation point after that. Listen to him. Because this was important. And I believe that we also see the Holy Spirit in that moment as well. I believe that it is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that gives us this transfigured state. But what does that mean for us? What does it mean that Jesus was the fulfillment of both the law and the prophets? Well, it tells us who he was, that he was the Messiah. He is the Son of God, and that he came both fully God and fully man. It tells us that he is the second person of the Trinity. And we have instructions. Just like Peter, we often don't know what to do when we're in, pre- in the presence of God. I'm still amazed that Peter was frightened. And it, it often makes me wonder, how would I react if Jesus were there with me? Would I be frightened? I don't think so. I think there's a difference. And that difference does come from the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And so today I want to talk to you for a minute the difference between transformation and transfiguration, both of which we may become. I've never heard many preachers preach that we can become transfigured just as Christ was transfigured. But the more I read the scripture and the more I I thought about what John Wesley said about sanctification, entire sanctification and Christian perfection, I realized that we can indeed become transfigured. So what is the difference? The moment that we receive Jesus Christ, that we know that he is our personal savior, we are transformed. We are transformed into a new creation, the creation that God intended for us to be. But just like Peter and John, we have to go down from the mountain. Yes, we have that mountain experience of being transformed. Last week, last week we participated in communion. And in that participation and that receiving of God, of Jesus's body and his blood, we are transformed. We are continually being transformed. Transformed how? Transformed into the likeness of Jesus. And so after we have that mountain experience, what are we to do? Well, we are to be disciples and to make disciples. So we have to go out into the world as transformed people. And this is when we begin to walk with God. This is when we begin to do exactly what God has called us to do. To look at Jesus, know who he is, know that he came fully God, fully man, that he lived, that he died, that he was resurrected. And we carry that out into the world, allowing Jesus to continually transform us. As I said, John Wesley would call this sanctification, meaning that we desire to be holy as Christ is holy. But what are we working toward? Well, we're working toward transfiguration. You hear a little bit of this in the scripture when Mark says that Jesus became so white, whiter than than someone who is bleached because it wasn't about the color white. It was about the glow that was in. It was the fire that was in. It was the sun that was within Jesus revealing who he is. And that's what we want today. We desire not just to be like Jesus, 
but to be so much like Jesus that others see Jesus in us. That when they look at us, we too have been transfigured. That our very being becomes holy as Christ is holy. John Wesley called this Christian perfection, meaning that we are being perfected through the power of the Holy Spirit every day of our lives. God gives us mountain experiences in which we go to the mountain. Sometimes we go hurt and sad, sick, lonely, questioning, angry, frightened. And in that mountain, which sometimes is a valley, God says, be still and know, know me fully. Know that Jesus has come and that the Holy Spirit is with us. And so he transforms us constantly over and over and over again. And we are baptized over and over and over again in the power of the Holy Spirit. We get glimpses of what it means to be transfigured just as we get glimpses of what it means to be made perfect. There are moments that we come down from the mountain transformed and others see us and know that we have changed. Changed into the appearance of Christ. And we begin to do the work that Christ has called us to do. We are disciples, making disciples. We are witnesses into the world. Transfiguration happens in the work. No, it's not by our works that we are saved. That's grace. But we must receive it, receive grace, and we must act on that grace. And that's what it means to come down the mountain or out of the valleys and continue to do that work that we've been called to do. It's in the working is where God meets us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we experience the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in that, in those glimpses, in those moments, that's when we are transfigured. And yes, others see Christ in us. And one day, one day we will be whiter than snow, whiter than bleach. So much so that the sun is so in, in us, burst through. And we dwell in the very presence with our triune God. But eternity is now. Eternal life is here. And so I would encourage you, especially when the days are difficult, to go to the mountain, to look up, to see God, to hear him, Perhaps hear him say to you, you are my son, you are my daughter, and I am well pleased in you. Listen to Jesus. Do what he says. Seek transfiguration and others. Will listen to you because you speak for me. So come, come Holy Spirit. Begin with transformation this morning. But Lord, we seek to be transfigured as your son was transfigured. May we be perfected, perfected in Christ, not for our glory, 
but for yours, Lord. We do not seek to be God, but we seek to be like Jesus, to be servants as he served us, to love as he loved us. So come, Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.